You just got this error and perhaps you have already fixed it, but still wonder why it happened at all. In this video you learn how to fix the problem and why it happened by learning about variants in programming languages. Let me show you the quickest way to get to the problem. Here is class shape. Here is class rectangle that inherits from shape. I create a list with two rectangle instances and annotate the list to only contain rectangles. Now I create another list of shape and assign rectangles to it. If a rectangle is a subtype of shape, a list of rectangle must be a subtype of a list of shape, right? No. Static type checker Pyrite says the list of rectangle is not compatible with the list of shape. Now, the first thing you might ask yourself is why would you cast the shapes anyway? Well, let me extend the example. Class shape gets a draw method. I create a function that takes a list of shapes and draws them. I create the list of rectangles again and pass them to the draw all shapes function. I get the same type error. This is because when the rectangle argument is passed, the function creates a name in its local scope that references the rectangles list. Essentially the same thing as I did before. Now what is interesting is that this code will work fine. At runtime Python has no problem considering a list of rectangle as a list of shape. Python uses duct typing to call draw and when it works, everyone is happy. And still, there is a potential problem in this code. The problem has something to do with generics. What is that? If you are new to type hints in Python, you might wonder what this syntax means. You already know that a list is a container for elements. Python lists are heterogeneous, which means one single list can contain elements of different types. Languages like c -sharp or Java can force a list to work with a specific element type. But how does that work? Do they need a list class for each different type? No. They make the list a generic class that gets the type of its elements when it is instantiated. This is what it looks like to create such a list in c -sharp. The generic list can be instantiated for a specific data type and once the list is instantiated, it only allows that data type. Python does not have generic lists. Or you might argue that it has the ultimate form of generic lists because they can work with every data type because of duct typing. But things change once we add type hints. Now suddenly, the type checker is aware of the type of the elements in a list. In this example, it is a list of integers. One thing is really important to realize at this moment. The Python interpreter will not enforce the list elements to be of type int. But the static type checker does. So generic classes only exist at the level of static type checking. Now, when dealing with generic classes, a new question pops up. If rectangle is a subtype of shape, then what is the subtyping relationship between a list of rectangle and a list of shape? This subtyping relationship is called variance and it is the key to solving the problem we are facing. Variance describes the subtyping relationship between generic classes like generic lists. In our example, there is one thing we are sure of. A rectangle is a subtype of shape. All this time we expect and want the list of rectangle to be a list of shape. When that is true, we say the list is covariant in its type arguments. But we already know that this is not true because the message says that the list is invariant. So what are the alternatives? Is the list of shape perhaps a subtype of the list of rectangle? When that is true, we say the generic is contravariant in its type arguments. Contravariance is not easy to understand and since it is not part of our problem, I'm going to ignore it in this video. So I look at the third option, which is invariant. 
This means that although a rectangle is a subtype of shape, generic classes that use these types as arguments have no subtyping relationship. And indeed, the error message says that the list is invariant. When I first realized this, I had two questions. 1. Why is a list of rectangle not a valid subtype of a list of shape? And 2. Who gets to decide that? I can show the answer to the first question with a simple example. I add a getArea method to the rectangle class and print all areas. And that works. But the static type checker still warns about this code. Let me show you why. As you see, the draw all shapes function expects a list of shapes. And that means I can add an instance of a shape to the list. And now things will crash spectacularly. What happened? I just packed a shape in the list of rectangles. But the type hint promised that the list only contains rectangles. But since the parameter type hint thinks this is a list of shapes, adding a shape instance is allowed in the function. As you see, in this scenario where the list is mutable, a list of rectangle cannot be a subtype of a list of shape. The list is invariant in its type arguments. And what do you know? That is what the type checker is telling us all this time. But there is a problem with the message and that is the proposed solution. Switching list to sequence. This hint might work in one scenario, but not another one. Let me explain what I mean. I change the list type to a sequence type. I import sequence. A sequence is a read-only list and marked by the authors as covariant. The wiggly line has disappeared. The function call is now accepted by the type checker. But of course the type checker now warns that a sequence does not allow mutation. So I move this code to its own function. I call add shape. And there is my error again. But this time it is my intention to change the list so I cannot annotate the parameter to be a sequence of shape. So what I must do is use the exact types. And there are two possibilities. Either my goal was to add a rectangle to a list of rectangles or to add a shape to a list of shapes. If it was my goal to add a shape to a list of shapes, I need to have a list of shapes. I use it to call add shape. And the type checker accepts that. And what about adding a shape to a list of rectangles? Well, that is just not accepted. So either I remove this line or I create yet another function that specifically adds a rectangle to a list of rectangles. And I use it instead of add shape here. And now all errors are gone. You see, it can get quite a puzzle to get everything working and without type hints, potential subtyping problems are very hard to spot. But even with static type checking, understanding the real problem can take a while. Everything depends on your intent and my experience is that static type checking helps me to think about what I want in the first place. There is one more thing I need to tell you. Do you remember these two questions? The first one has been answered. Why is a list of rectangle not a valid subtype of a list of shape? Because there is the risk of adding a shape to a list of rectangles. But the second question is not answered. Who gets to decide that? I kind of expected that variance is inferred from the intent of things. As long as I am not mutating the shapes list in the draw all shapes function, this is a covariant situation. 
And still, the static type checker says the list is invariant. And that means that the variance property is stored in the generic list. If you want to dive deeper, I recommend you to open PEP484 and read the part on generics. There you see where variance properties are stored. By the way, remember when I said that generics are a static type checker thing and ignored by the Python interpreter? Well, that is not quite true. And if you want to learn more about runtime generics in Python, Click on this video. There you learn how to author generic classes by using the type arguments at runtime.